Foundation, you know, when I started with, you know, a few dozen uh, 10 years ago, uh, we're up to 380 um, student members now, which is pretty amazing and fantastic. And we have very <coughs> high hopes of even more, like I'm expecting 50 to 100 more student members even next year. So we have some particular goals is to uh, develop not only their uh, leadership skills, but their confidence and especially strengthen their technical skills by giving them these chances to um, present and compete and have these uh, competitive events at our uh, state and then possibly national uh, uh, conferences. But they have a lot of uh, community service activities and, you know, uh, trying to get them to understand better what's going on in healthcare. And you are part of our partnership. Of um, uh, we can't get along with without it. Uh, like I said, we're you're part of the network. Uh, you know, access to professionals, and um, we you're, we just really appreciate your partnering with us. And we really try to get all of these uh, skills and trainings right into the classroom and have um, the courses that we teach, you know, be represented, uh, be represented in the uh, events that we um, offer. So on um, March 22 and 23, when we're going to have the competitions, uh, there's going to be not only competitions, but uh, workshops. I mean, it is like hmm, almost a, I would like to believe, world-class, you know, student conference of having uh, workshops or, you know, educational sessions on uh, first aid and CPR if you're not trained that way already. Um, we have tours um, out to, like, the crime lab lined up and, uh, you know, a lot of activities uh, as well as uh, the business meeting where all the students, you know, nearly 400 students all are getting together and meeting and networking. So it's a pretty big deal. <coughs> and this year we have over 60 adult volunteers um, that are helping just with the competitive events portion. That doesn't even include the workshops, et cetera, or the exhibits. So we really appreciate everyone helping with this big effort. So appreciative. Thank you so much. So um, we have the three columns. One's the written kind all done now uh, over on the left side. And then some are written with then a skills lab on site in Anchorage. And so the two middle and right columns are ones that you're going to be um, judging. And so we really appreciate um, your help with these on-site events. So uh, about our competitive events, we are aiming for the best possible experience, you know, for you, uh, but also mostly for the students. We want to have really good quality events, uh, well-managed. Um, Mari is helping us. My other colleague, Ms. Shawnee Glenn, who uh, lives uh, in uh, Palmer, is, you know, really doing a lot of the groundwork to get everything ready. A really huge thing is we want the students to feel like they're getting a fair shot at, you know, their competitive event. So fairness to all, we want um, the atmosphere to be warm and compassionate. I just have to always put in the caveat that you as judges are not to give feedback. This is, a, this is not a training situation. This is a judging situation. So our goal, of course, is to motivate them to have studied for this and to improve their knowledge and skills and to, uh, to recognize them at our awards uh, ceremony on Saturday and really to help 
you know, their journey toward their health care career, uh, just brushing up, just practicing uh, the skills that they might have to use later on. And there's all different levels of competition. There's some uh, what we call leadership, where they have to speak or do an art project and, you know, various things like that. They will, um, you know, the top winners uh, are eligible to go to uh, the International Leadership Conference in Dallas this next June. So it's all a big process. So you folks who are online with us, and then we did one last week, and I think we're going to do one more. Um, you're attending this webinar orientation. Check. You did the first step. So um, yay. And it should help you understand the big picture. That's our goal. And we want you to know where the event is held and when it will be, what your schedule is. And of course, we're all at the Hilton other years we've done in other places, and who knows about next year, but this year it's all at the Hilton. Uh, Mari is going to send out to you the event guidelines, and at the end of all event guidelines there's a scoring sheet, and so being sort of familiar with that is um, you know, part of your responsibility. And uh, feel free to email me, Andrea, with any questions you have. Um, we're going to talk more about the uh, event guidelines with the scoring sheets uh, later, so we'll get to that. But on the actual day, it would be handy if you brought the event guideline with you. You may have made some notes on there to have questions, because I'm going to meet up with everyone right at the beginning, either me or uh, my colleague, Shawnee Glenn, the other um, state advisor who knows a lot about the events too, and so you'll have a chance to do that. But if you forget it at home, because I know things happen, we will have one for the judges to review. All the students are supposed to bring one, uh, but theirs may be on their phone, so it won't be like a, a hard copy for you to review. Uh, Mari <sighs> is going to send out a volunteer quick guide that's going to have some uh, important information about um, where to check in and where to park, so and uh, so those kind of things. So uh, she should send that out if she hasn't already. And our phone numbers in case you oh, yeah, get a hold of us at the very last minute. Yeah. And so um, we really would like you to arrive on time so that there's time for this uh, pre-event huddle conference time so that you can get any last-minute questions so we can orient you to the room and the setup and the check-in is at the Kenai Room, which is just off the elevator level of the second floor. And then you have to go up a little ways to get to the ballrooms and other meeting rooms where the events are. But the Kenai Room is on the elevator level, right? You know, you can't miss it right at. And we'll have a sign there to judge, HOSA judge check-in, because the next room down is for a different a group of students, and so we don't want you going to the wrong room and feel lost. So, like I said before, we're going to have a 10-minute huddle pre-conference with the room steward, who is going to also be helping with the whole event, and any other judges that are. We usually aim for, uh, you know, two or three judges per event, and we want to review and discuss the rating sheets and agree on, you know, how things are going to be scored. So we have a scoring or rating consistency is a huge goal. So um, the judging takes place on March 22nd or 23rd. So in, on March 22nd, we have our opening ceremony. So uh, events don't start until early afternoon, like 1.30 or 2, but go into the evening. And then on the 23rd, on Friday, um, they start 8 o'clock in the morning. In fact, we are hoping for the uh, extemporaneous health poster judge and room stewards. To, uh, oh, no, actually, it's just the room steward who's coming early for that. So anyway, so some early on uh, Friday morning, Anchorage Hilton, 3rd Avenue, parking. We usually uh, buy the Sunshine Building or Kitty Corner to the in the summer market parking lot. We are going to have food and snacks and water. 
uh, available for the judges in that same Kenai room <coughs> that's your go-to check-in, check-out place. So here's what the event guidelines look like. There's uh, one for every event, and they have particular parts to it. So it's very busy, a little bit too much information, so Mari has pointed out um, some particular places that's good for judges to look at. It's really nice for you to look at the overview of the event where it says the description and some rules and procedures. And if it anywhere it says a written test, that has taken place already. And so you can just skip over that. So uh, sometimes there is a secret skill or secret topic, and that will be revealed when they come to the room and get started. Um, everything is timed, <laughs> and so uh, the room steward will be helping to keep track of um, the time for everything. But it might be you too, so you need to know what the time limits are. We'll go over that at the beginning of each um, event. Sorry, and all the spring sheets have time limits on them. So uh, part of the big um, event uh, guideline has you know, what is required. And uh, hopefully, Shani and I have taken care of that. And uh, some things are supposed to be um, provided by, uh, well, we're going to provide everything. Everything will be there for you. You need to bring nothing. If you wanted to bring your event guideline that you were sent that has some notes that you may have made on them, um, feel free, but everything will be provided for you at the site. <coughs> So oh, um, one of the things is that uh, we're going to have appointment times for um, people to give their presentation or do their skills, and that is uh, going to be some chore of the uh, room steward, possibly, um, or I am going to set that up. Sometimes uh, students have some slight conflicts with another event, and we have, um, it's our policy to accommodate those needs that maybe they need to be at the beginning of the list of competitors uh, appointment time or at the end. So we are going to accommodate all student needs so that they can do their um, possibly slightly conflicting events. Uh, <coughs> we have these flow charts that are in the, in the uh, uh, event guideline, and so if it says uh, teams report to a holding room at the appointed time, they should know their appointed time. It's really important that um, the room steward will have um, the student, uh, a roster of students with their uh, competitor number so that you, uh, either the room steward Somehow we will get that onto the competitor sheet. And then your big job is to um, be sure you sign the uh, scoring sheet and uh, do the scoring, either <coughs> one or nothing. It's really important that you put an actual zero in if a zero is, um, if they didn't do it. It's either they did it or they didn't do it. And so Mari has a little more about that. So uh, some are, you know, all or nothing, like at the top of this uh, public health. Um, there is if they uh, either get all points or not all points, so they have to, they know their, uh, their uh, um, presentation is going to be, uh, is known, and that they aren't, don't use any uh, electricity or like bring their uh, um, and computer in to show stuff or whatever. So it's all or nothing there. Some of the other ones <coughs> that you 
um, rate them, you know, 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. And so that's where you have your uh, judging. That's where we want to get some consistency uh, amongst the judges. <coughs> that was the round one where it was um, just a sort of a little preview of what they were going to talk about. And then if you wanted to see them again, you might rate them higher and see the rest of the story. Usually our practice is to um, uh, advance three quarters or 75 percent, you know, usually we round up a little bit if, if there's an odd number there, um, to advance to round two. And so uh, public health is one of the ones where they actually do two rounds on site. And so you will be scoring that for the round one sort of a preview, and then uh, doing a lot, they get a longer uh, time to show you and tell you about their plan, public health issue. And remember this slide says don't teach, don't feedback. You, you might have two judges there, and each judge should be scoring uh, independently. There is a rule, and I'm not quite sure if we have a slide on that, but if there is a discrepancy at the end when you add them all up of more than 10 points, then you could go back and actually see, oh, here it is. So we individually rate the competitors. You as an individual judge, you might have someone sitting at the table with you, but you should be listening carefully, <laughs> your own self. And then if the point spread's greater than 10 points, you could discuss how and why you rated them a certain way and may choose to adjust your, adjust your score if needed. And you just have a different perspective, and that's why we try to have more than one judge. And then we, you know, add up the scores from the two judges and, uh, uh, you know, add everybody up. So it's, it's, a, it's a combination score. Andrew, can you quickly address what judges should fill out at the top of the form? Oh, yes. So, um, uh, we here in Alaska have no sections because we're still sort of small, and all the level uh, that we have right now is uh, the SS, so you really don't have to do that because SS is for secondary student, our secondary school, and uh, they, may, they will have a team number or a uh, competitor number, so we need to know that. And the most important thing is you need to sign it. The room steward might help with the team or competitor number, but the um, judge needs to sign it to make it an uh, official scoring sheet. A uh, quick question about that. Yes. I'm looking at the uh, judge's rating sheet for extemporaneous writing right now. There's a uh, space in there for division. What is that? Yes, that's the same as a section, and we don't have those. So. Okay. Uh, in division, no, we, we don't have those yet. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. We're all one group, yep. So division might be the same middle school. You know, they change these things up. If, uh, I think extemporaneous writing also does allow for uh, middle school or post-secondaries, and so that would be a division. But we're all secondary. We're thinking about those other levels. We're working on it, but it hasn't happened yet. So. It's really important for you to follow the event guidelines. And um, it's just really hard to not stress that too much. <laughs> and uh, it's either a does or does not do or meets that or does not meet it. You know, some you do get that, you know, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10 rating, but mostly it's a do or do not do. If you have questions, then, of course, you should ask me or Miss uh, Shawna Glenn. And we, we would like you to smile at the competitors, but we don't want you to chatter with them. So before, before during, or after. And that's why one thing is uh, you will have a lanyard that says judge on it, but we won't have your name on it. We don't want them to come up to you afterwards or whenever, and you know, they see you in the hallway and say, so how would I do? So yeah, you are an anonymous judger. You're the professional, and we're hoping you just smile and uh, be, you know, smile and nod, but pretty much that's it. And then it is a huge responsibility, you know, 
there is some um, skills that are going to be judged that possibly um, could be harmful or damaging of something or another, and so it's your job to stop that. Hey, stop that, you know, so uh, uh, that kind of thing. So that's your job. And, of course, um, complete the evaluation. Uh, we, have a, we have a judge evaluation sheet that we hope you will complete for us um, afterwards and because uh, we want your feedback uh, about our event and aim to improve each year, and we take those into consideration and feel like we're you know, making progress, but there's always room for improvement, so we really will appreciate your feedback to the whole event and our conference at the end. So uh, since our students are going to be dressed in their uh, business attire or some will, a lot of them will be in uh, HOSA blue uniforms. Um, we hope that you folks will also be dressed for business in business attire. Just adds to the professionalism of the whole um, conference. And so there's my cell phone number, but it's also going to be on the um, uh, quick guide, right, Mari? Yes, it is. And is my email on that? Quick guide too. Yes. Okay, perfect. Yeah. And so um, I'm uh, pretty responsive, and I text. And so uh, <laughs> um, please feel free to you know get a hold of me with questions. And uh, anyway, we just have to thank you again, and we really appreciate you, and just cannot thank you enough, really. So thank you so much. Are there questions? Um, maybe there's one thing you can clarify for me. Uh, at one of the slides way back uh, towards the beginning, it said uh, you don't certify skill competency as a judge. Um, is that only like during the live events? or Because it seems like the scoring sheets, the whole point is to certify skill competency. Well, that's a good point. Um, there are, say for instance, like nursing assistant. Um, the, uh, we uh, judge their competency for that particular event, and we, we score their competency uh, level. However, it's not a state certifying event, so not like the, the state um, nursing assistant uh, state exam. That's what certifying means. We do not do okay. that. Okay. We I have a question. Are rating their level of competency for that particular work. Mostly rating it, we're not certifying it. Okay. Um, and I have a question. Can you hear me? Yes. Go ahead. Okay. I'm sorry. I sound like a frog. <laughs> I noticed on the scoring sheet the uh, Likert scale is in the multiples of two. Yes. So I presume that's what you're looking for, multiples of two, nothing in between? Yes. Thank you. Okay. Yes. Okay. And what, what is your event? Can, can you say your name and event? Yes, it's Jerry Rubin Medical Inf uh, Innovation. Oh, okay. Right. So, yes, that's what the Likert scale is. Um, you know, it really, uh, HOSA people are a little bit of control freaks, and so <laughs> that's what they want. They want, they give you possibilities, and that's what they want. Some, and, no, some I've other got events, you say, you know, like two or zero. And so that's okay. what they want. They want two or zero. They don't want one. Yeah, so. Okay, that's fine. Uh, yeah. The next question, if you just hold still a moment on that uh, slide. Uh, I, I see right here there's a 35 and a zero. I don't understand what the, what's going on okay. here because down here it's a zero to 15. Okay, so, um, so the very top one, the A section, it, they have to have all those things um, done. So one of the parts is that you're going to measure so pretty for sure all the students know this is the size, and so pretty for sure that's the size uh, maximum that they're going to come with. It's, um, other years, that's the only size that ever came, but smaller would be okay. Okay, now... And that um, they have a reference page on there somewhere or, you know, on the table, and that they have uploaded a video to uh, the team uh, that is a, actually a video link, and that they're... The 
display looked safe and that they hung out for an hour during the display time. And okay. so that's an all or nothing 35 okay. points. Right. And on the second on the display table, yeah. um, the looks like there are a variety of different Likert scales. It's very strange to me, coming from the research side. Oh, but I see. Pretty strange here because on the display table uh, now they're not not multiples of of uh, two. It's just a you know my my way of thinking. You know if you're going to have a Likert scale, the scale should be consistent. But yep, yep, I cannot defend that. So <laughs> <laughs> we use okay. but, uh, national host of census. Mm-hmm. Oh, mm-hmm. I'm hearing okay. you. I'm hearing you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm All right. Yeah, got Thank you. I apologize. Uh, no, you don't need to apologize. I'm, I'm just, I'm not, I'm not really in shock. Certainly, you know. Um, so that is very good feedback, and uh, uh, it could be it could the value. Put that on your event. Um, you know, your feedback, uh, uh, little paper, you know, um, judge feedback for us, and then we can take that. You know, um, uh, we go back east to Washington D.C. where they have a big. Um, a big uh, judge, uh, I mean, a state advisor conference. <laughs> well, I think probably they just, just want to have uh, um, no, it's, that's, uh, available I, I, for the display table. I and, not look at that that closely, and that is very bizarre, yeah. Yeah, you know, and, and they want more points for team members and presentations, so they're changing their Likert scale. I can understand that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Anything else? Well, not for me. Okay. Well, thank you. That's a very sharp eye. <laughs> we they talked about that. that. I can't. That's, they switched that up several times throughout the whole thing. I'm sad. I can't see very much anyway. Mm-hmm. All right. <clears throat> so, uh, let me ask one more question. Sure. When, when will we uh, get this package of material? I've got all this, uh, I think it's an eight-page document, and right. uh, a story of what you discussed today. I did take some screenshots of, uh, of your slides. Oh, no. uh, Mari should send it to you, right, Mari? Yep, I already have. Um, Jerry, the, the, what Andrea is talking about is the event guide that you um, already received. I can yes, I do. That. I have that. Yeah. And the scoring sheets are always right at the end of it. Oh, I didn't see. Oh, uh, I I don't. Let me just look here. Yeah, sure. I don't see. Yeah, I see one scoring sheet. Uh, there should be a round one and then a round two. Mm-hmm. Oh, all I have is round. Doesn't say round what. Yeah, let's. I only have one. Um, let me look here. This is. Ex- oh, no, this is extemporaneous health. So this was medical innovation that I had up here. So this is the packet that you should have received and no I don't I only have uh, page 8 what page are we looking at here this is page 8 so yeah there there is only okay so so um, yes you only get this um, you only get this one page I thought you said that there was what page 7 look like Mari can you page 7 is a, a style sheet oh yeah okay for how they are supposed to do their reference, yep. Because I, I, I heard you say that uh, I'll be in, involved with two rounds. So I thought I'd uh, That was my understanding, but, you know, it's just like uh, there's so many events. It's a blur to me right this minute. Um, but, um, here it is. So I don't think there are two rounds <laughs> Day, Andrea, I think they do. They have their display time, but the scoring happens oh, okay. it's presentation time. Okay, so um, it's sort of that first section where you're supposed to do all of those uh, display <coughs> items is sort of like a round one. It's a, it's a, it's sort of like round one, but it's 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 all on one sheet. You guys are all on one sheet because okay. either it's acceptable and meets the requirements or not, and that's why they get that huge uh, scoring um, difference. Yeah, I see. So uh, are we bringing tape measures or, or what? Uh, we will have tape measures there for you. 
Okay. You bring your very professional self, and we will have everything else. Okay. Thank you. Mm-hmm. And that's the event, Andrea, that I have told the judges that they don't need to be there until 1030, even though the students are going to have been there from 930 to 1030, and the room straight right. for the display time, yes. Okay, I mean all morning, yeah. Okay. Any other questions? If not, we can switch to our room steward uh, mode here. And we will start our room steward orientation. Okay. And do we have room stewards online now? No, I see a caller two and a caller four and a caller seven. Oh, and Adrian. Hi, Adrian. So I believe Adrian is actually a um, pharmacy judge, not a room steward. So I don't, there's a few folks that I, I don't know who they are. So why don't we just go right ahead since we're going to put this um, as a recording up for sure. potential room stewards to watch after. Sure. Okay. So I'm Andrea Gelbin. I'm part of this uh, webinar today, and we have online with us also Mari Sell, who's our um, technical advisor and helps us with these kind of webinars and has also um, located and rounded up and or organizing all of our judges and room stewards. So thank you very much, Mari. Shawnee Glenn is another um, state advisor uh, from Palmer and Rosilla, and she um, will be at the conference, of course, to answer any questions also. So, um, the mission of HOSA is to empower HOSA, which are the future health professionals, to become leaders, you know, through their through education, which we're trying to encourage, and collaboration or networking, and the experience of this uh, conference. And so we're getting more and more uh, numbers of members through the years, and even Alaska is increasing. Maybe the next slide. <laughs> And so, yes, Alaska is up even from last year, from 300 to 380 this year, which uh, is considerable um, increase. And we're really expecting maybe another 50 to 100 more next year. So we're really growing. We've, we're finally getting this down. And, and the state is, uh, across the state, it's being recognized that health care is, uh, workforce development is needed, and HOSA really is part of that. And so, therefore, all of you who are helping with our conference are part of that, too. So we really appreciate everyone's um, support. So the goal of HOSA is to develop these leadership skills and qualities and build self-confidence and strengthen especially their academic and technical skills and network and have community activities and just really understand the current healthcare issues better. So you are part of the partnership of, you know, having these, um, helping us uh, grow our future health professionals. So that's why you're, you know, you're partnering throughout the community, and we really like to keep the dialogue going, the cooperation going, and so thank you so much for partnering with us. We really try to get uh, HOSA into the classroom, and this conference is really supported uh, through classroom activities, and so uh, I just wanted you to realize that HOSA is the full package. So at this um, conference that we're having in March, March 22 through 24, um, we need you as room stewards or room managers to help us you know, run a really professional, good, strong competition. At this orientation, you're going to get some specific instructions 
from well today from myself, Andrea, and Mari, and we're going to look over the uh, scoring and rating sheets and your particular duties. And so we're going to review the round one and round two appointment scheduling and hopefully have time for questions. So before the event, you were supposed to uh, attend this webinar orientation. Check. Thank you so much for being on with us. You should know uh, which event you're scheduled for and where it will be held. And it would be great if uh, Mari is sending you the event guidelines and if you could read them and then maybe make some notes of questions you might have. Of course, you can email me, Andrea, with any questions that you have. On the day of the event, you could bring the event guideline. Um, we might have some notes you've made and some questions that you want to get clarified, and especially the uh, volunteer quick guide that Mari is going to send you that will have uh, parking details, time, and where to check in. Of course, we want you to arrive on time, and we want you to check into the volunteers room, which is the Kenai room at the Hilton second floor, right out of the second floor elevator and so it should be easy to see. We'll have a sign outside of it, too. The Kenai room is ours. Other rooms there on that uh, very strange mezzanine level is um, for other, other um, uh, student groups, and so please come to the Kenai room. And we're going to have a 10-minute or so pre-event huddle with the judges and myself or Shawnee Glenn to clarify scoring and uh, you know get some uh, consistency established and answer any questions. And we want you to double check, this is a huge job of yours, <laughs> to dub double check the judges scoring sheets and the student materials and be sure that the judges sign the sheets and then you're the liaison that is eventually going to bring all the scoring sheets back to the Kenai volunteer room after the event. So the goal of our competitive events is to motivate members to improve their knowledge and skills. It's a, sim it's a system for recognizing competencies. Um, they are not certifying events like I was last group wanted to know what does that mean and it's like the, the state certifies people we rate them on their particular skill but we don't certify them and they don't get any kind of certification from us and it's all about their you know educational journey and you know, shining them up for their future giving them experiences that will help you know help them make you know good progress and there's all levels of competition, so there's all different ways for them to, you know, practice and have good experiences. So we have a commitment to our competitors that we want to have the best possible experience, and that's why we need you to help us with this. So we want to have a really good quality of our events, and we're trying to manage them, and you're part of our management system now. It's a huge goal of ours is to have the students feel like they're getting a fair shot at their competitive event. So we really are aiming for fairness to all. We're, we are aiming also for a warm, compassionate learning environment. Um, but later we're going to say that we don't give feedback and this is not a teaching time. Thanks. And on. Moving on. So these are the events in the middle and right column are the events that we're doing on site at the Hilton in March, March 22 and 23. So we need you to help with all of those. So it's really important. Uh, you are a big part of our you know, excellent management system that we want to keep the events running on schedule and make them run smoothly and have fairness to all and that 
warm, compassionate environment, but we don't chatter with the students, and we don't want you chattering. We don't want you uh, giving feedback to them. Even, like, good job, you know, smiling is nice, but pretty much no chatter. So here's your duties. Uh, just list it out. We want you to check them in. You will have a roster, and you will check them in, and you might be the one um, putting the, their uh, competitor number onto the scoring sheet, and you're going to oh. check and see if the competitors are wearing their appropriate dress, and we will have you put, um, I don't think it's give points, but I think we'll just have you note that, and then later then there will be added points. Most everyone knows they should come dressed appropriately, so it's, it's just you'll give a PD on their score sheet that says they were have proper dress, and uh, then they will just go on. Uh, the proper dress is um, business attire for anything but possibly a um, uh, medical skill, like for nursing assistants, and uh, they could wear scrubs. So uh, if it's a biomedical lab or um, something like that, they could wear a lab coat. So if you have questions about um, proper dress, you could ask me. But always, in all events, it's okay to have business attire. And you're going to uh, check the scoring sheets after each event and be sure that the judges have um, added up the scoring sheets and put a total and particularly signed them. We cannot go back and find these judges later, and so we really need you to be sure that they've signed it so it's an official score sheet. And many times you will also be uh, a timekeeper, so keeping track of time to keep the event running smoothly and on time, it's really important. So the competitors have a time limit, and then the judges for adding up their scoring and having any consults also <laughs> have a time limit it's all spelled out in the event guidelines. And um, some uh, uh, events have uh, round two appointments that will have to be made, and so we're going to let um, room stewards uh, make, make those appointments. And uh, so Sorry about that. Here, so Mari's going backwards. Anyway, um, in the making of appointments, some students or teams of students may have conflicting um, events that you know make them want to be either at the beginning of the list or the end of the list of appointments. And our uh, policy is to always accommodate that as best as we can. So uh, please accommodate the appointment times. Uh, if the student, uh, they'll have their list and you'll have a schedule. Oh, yeah, you can see that they have um, another event that's you know, approximately at the same time. So we want to get one done early and the other one done late. Okay. And like I said before, some room stewards will also be timekeepers. So we have expectations of you, too. As, since the students are going to be dressed in their business attire, we hope you will be dressed for business. So this is what a scoring sheet looks like, and you can see at the top has a place for the competitor number. It might be a team number if it's a team event, uh, but we want you to put that up top. And then at the end, we want to be sure uh, before you take the scoring sheets away that you are sure that the judge has signed those. We have told the judges that they're supposed to sign it too. And so um, then at the bottom, we want um, some points in each of the awarded column boxes and then a total at the bottom. So this is what an appointment uh, for especially the nursing assistant uh, round two is going to look like and uh, people are going to, nursing assistant competitors are going to show up and you're going to put them in groups of three because we're going to have three nursing assistants um, sort of in a round robin in the event room at one time. And so we want like a group of three at one and a group of three at 120 and a group of three at 140, that kind of thing. And so uh, this is
is uh, public health, and public health has two rounds uh, right there at the um, event. And so uh, there's been some question about the very top row of the uh, scoring sheet, the section and the level. And we are still small enough here in Alaska that we do not have sections and levels. And so uh, those do not have to be filled in. But like the team number, uh, public health is a, a team of two to six. So they're, you know, a group of kids, but um, they will have a team number. And then, of course, we want you to have the judge sign that also. And then uh, afterwards, we will, uh, when they check in with you for this round, they might say, oh, yeah, I need to be, um, you know, at the beginning of the list or the end of the list if they get into round two. So they should tell you that. We're, we're trying to get that information out to all the students that they need to speak up for themselves and their needs. So this is a little bit um, more judging that happens on the second round of public health. And so this is very straightforward. Uh, team number at the top, judge's signature. And the judges get to judge more um, you know, subjectively and give them different scores. But um, it's nice if they add it all up at the bottom and, of course, sign the top. So this is what. Um, because you could have either two to six people on the team, uh, we want that group of people in there. Actually, there's only one group of six, but so I made slots for all of them. And there's just a few of these, so um, like 18, you know, six or 18, so I can't remember. And so uh, this sh shouldn't be too hard to um, fill in accommodating any conflicts that the students might have. Just to say again, and we can't say enough, that we appreciate your time. Uh, we want to remind you that all the event materials will be provided, your scoring sheets with clipboards and you know, all the event supplies, all the rosters, all the appointment sheets, everything you could possibly imagine, including food and snacks and water, to you know keep you um, going strong all day. So thanks again for your support of Alaska HOSA, the future health professionals. Um, here's my phone number, and please let Mari know if you have any, uh, if for any reason you can't assist with the event for which you're assigned, and please <coughs> arrive on time. And the uh, parking is sort of kitty corner in the summer market, market parking lot, and Mari will have that on the quick volunteer quick guide also. Any questions? Okay, I've got I've got a, a silly one. Is are, were you talking about the uh, lot behind the uh, post office there, in the yellow, behind the yellow mall? Yes, that's a good place to park. Okay, and so uh, we will get free parking, or do we have to pay the parking there? We um, we don't have a way to uh, there isn't free parking, but I have told volunteers in the past that if there's a hardship with parking, that I can just go out and pay for you. Okay, just let that's a problem. Just have to figure out how many hours will be involved and just pay ahead of time, I presume. Um, you know, when I've parked there, I've just used my credit card, uh -huh. um, and. You know, like, um, HOSA is an event that my organization um, supports, so it's something that I could get reimbursed through my work. Um, but it, we can, if, but if you need assistance with parking, um, we, can, we can provide that. No, that's no problem. I was just wondering, um, thinking about how many hours I'd need to purchase ahead of time. That's all. Oh, so, well, yeah. that be that time should be on your assignment. Okay. All righty. Good. Yeah. I think you're 1030 to 130, so it would be okay. those times. And it's um, you can pay by the hour. I believe it's $1.50 an hour. Sure. So I'll uh, buy four hours. We'll just go from right. there. Yeah. yeah. Thanks. I just yeah. know what, what I needed to do so I don't have to run outside to right. add more time. No, we don't want right. to do that.
Any other questions? Are we good then? Okay. So. There's nothing else, then thank you so much again for your time. And this will conclude our uh, HOSA room steward orientation. Okay, thank, thank you. you, everybody. Thank you, Andrea. Bye-bye. Yeah. See you in Anchorage. See you in Anchorage. Thanks. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye.